Okay, so the other day I was refereeing for the BCJJF and I was doing the Pacific Northwest Open and uh, it was a great tournament. Everybody had a lot of fun, it was well organized, the jiu-jitsu level was really high, uh, and the refereeing was really good. Thank you. Swish. And um, <clears throat> I've uploaded onto my YouTube channel the matches I did for white belt, the other blue belt matches, some purples, uh, I don't think I did any browns, but I did some blacks, some good black belt matches, they're all on there. But um, I wanted to talk about these three matches uh, with you and go through the refereeing, I was the referee, you know, and the score, the points I awarded and, you know, penalties, blah, 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 because uh, it was a bit of a challenge, you know? It was these two gentlemen uh, in the blue belt middleweight nogi division, and it was the best of the three, you know, spoiler alert, they fight each other three times. Here, let's, let's talk about it. Here we go. So, so here we are. Match number one. So the fellow on the left, his name is Mr. DeFreeze. You can see he's wearing an anklet, a yellow anklet, and I'm wearing the corresponding wristband so you can see who's getting the points. And um, the fellow on the other side, his name is Mr. Butt. That's his name. And he is wearing a uh, burgundy sweater. And um, <clears throat> here, let's watch what happens here. So they're squaring off. They're sizing each other up. You know. And bear in mind, in jiu-jitsu, you're expected to know the rules. Okay, they're going off the mat. So, stop, I say, stop. You know. So I had to say stop two or three times there. One of the rules in jiu-jitsu is uh, you should be following the referee's instructions, okay? And there, I had to say stop two or three times, which is sometimes just, you know, people get on the mat and they're all fired up. That's just like how life is, right? Mr. Butt now goes back to the middle of the mat, and look, he wants to continue fighting before I even come back on the mat. And the other fellow, Mr. DeFreeze, tells him to wait. And at this point, I put them back on the correct side, Mr. DeFreeze, the guy with the anklet goes on the same side as my wristband, and Mr. Butt's on the other side. And I say to Mr. Butt, hey, listen, a sweater is not, it doesn't, that's not legal attire for uh, no-gi jiu-jitsu. You're supposed to be wearing a form-fitting shirt because, and maybe you didn't see when they were, you know, when he shot in on Mr. DeFreeze and they were going off the mat, Mr. DeFreeze tried to make underhooks and his hands got kind of caught up in the, uh, in the looseness of the sweater, if you will which is why you're not supposed to be wearing that kind of stuff. And at first I thought, you know what, we'll just let it slide. But now I'm like, you know, that doesn't jive. So I asked him to change it. And I'm saying, hey, you can't be wearing a sweater, you know. You can't be wearing a wedding dress or a burqa or whatever you want to call it on a mat. You know, we're grappling here. And now I'm explaining to Mr. DeFreeze, he's got to change his shirt. You have to be wearing a form-fitting, you know, shirt. I had a guy like that in Calgary, too, that wanted to uh, wear super loose clothing while grappling. Anyway, he's got, you know, a grappling shirt. I don't know why he wasn't wearing that to begin with. It wasn't cold, but whatever. So I haven't penalized anybody at this point. So I haven't, I haven't penalized anybody at this point, right? I haven't awarded any advantages, no, no penalty points, nothing like that. Because when Mr. Butt shot in, Mr. DeFreeze, his back didn't hit the mat. His butt wasn't on the mat. He was just countering it. They went off the mat. And I haven't penalized anybody yet either, but here we go. We're going again. Everybody's wearing what they're supposed to be wearing. I'm watching carefully, as referees should. And, uh, you know, they're sizing each other up. Sometimes in no gi, people don't want to pull guard, and you get this, you know what I mean? Sort of, uh, you know, they're looking for opportunities to shoot or clinch or whatever, you know? And it's a tied match at this point, right? He shoots in again. Now look at this. That is a very deep guillotine choke, okay? Mr. DeFreeze, or sorry, Mr. Butt spins out, and Mr. DeFreeze is applying what will now be. He's almost got his back. See, kind of. See, he puts a he puts a hook in. He puts a hook in for a second, kind of over the arm, but still he's trying to. And now look at that. That is a very deep rear naked choke. So he's going to get advantages for the guillotine, the rear naked, and for almost taking his back, because he didn't have the hooks in, he didn't secure the points. And Mr. Butt's in a lot of trouble. But he escapes. And they return to, see, there's an advantage. 
So I'm awarding an advantage for the guillotine. There's an advantage for the rear naked choke. And now they go off the mat again. So I stop them and I put them back in the middle. And I make sure they start on the correct sides. I'm saying, you know, I say to the scorekeeper, you're ready to go. Okay, let's go. We're going again. And they're, you know, sizing each other up once again, looking for takedown opportunities, as they should. You know, it's a grappling match, right? And I am continuing to watch carefully. See, I'm giving an advantage now for the almost taking the back. Because I'd given one for the guillotine, one for the rear naked, but I'd forgotten to give one for almost taking the back. Because Mr. DeFreeze had almost taken Mr. Butt's back. So now this is three advantages. This is the third advantage for Mr. DeFreeze. Right? And I'm nodding. Okay. Now it's three nothing advantages. Now they're almost off the mat because Mr. Butt's just kind of pushing him. But uh, he's pushing him and then he's shooting on him when they're near the edge of the mat, right? Now bear in mind, you're supposed to stay on the mat. See, he shoots in. I said stop. I've said stop. I've said stop. And once again, Mr. Butt doesn't stop when I say stop. I had to say stop three times, you know? And I'm saying to him now, hey... Listen to my instructions. And now look, he wants to start fighting yet. I haven't done the old, okay, go. So he's not following referee instructions. And I'm saying, okay, stop. And I say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you a penalty because you're not following my instructions. And really at this point, it doesn't, you know, it's a verbal warning is just the initial penalty. It doesn't matter because Mr. DeFreeze is up by three advantages. A penalty doesn't, you know. Turn the tables. Mr. DeFreeze was winning, he's still winning, but now Mr. Butt has a penalty for not following referee instructions. Right? And I'm saying, hey, I'm the referee, listen to what I'm doing, please keep it on the mat. Ready to go? Okay, here we go. Now we're going again. So it's three advantages for Mr. DeFreeze and one penalty for Mr. Butt at this point. Okay? in there, you know? Now, like I said, you're supposed to keep it on the mat. You can't walk backwards off the mat, and you also can't just push your opponent off the mat without doing takedown attempts. You see what I mean? And um, in order to score points, it has to be on the mat, the blue part, or in the safety area, which is yellow here. You know, you have to hold it for three seconds, and you can't be in a submission hold. Okay, those are the three criteria for scoring points for takedowns for anything. And again, look, he shoots in, Mr. DeFreeze puts him in a guillotine, Mr. Butt's looking for a takedown. At least he's on the mat. That's good. And Mr. DeFreeze is countering and maintaining a guillotine choke. Now, I can't give the two for the takedown yet because he's Mr. Butt is still in a guillotine. And I'm waiting for him to get out of the guillotine. He's still in a guillotine. He's being put... See? Now, he's out of the guillotine. Okay? So I'm awarding the two points for the takedown. But I can't award three points for a guard pass because he was in a guillotine choke... He was in a guillotine choke the whole time, and now he's back in the guard. When the guillotine choke, when he escapes the guillotine choke, he's back in the guard. So, at any point, was he past the guard and not in a submission? No. So he doesn't get uh, the three for the pass, or even an advantage. You don't get that if you're in a submission hold. Oh, and I'm giving uh, Mr. DeFreeze an advantage for the guillotine choke that he had uh, Mr. Butt in. And now watch this. Oh. I don't know if you can tell. At this point, Mr. Butt is now talking to me saying, hey, where are my guard passing points? because he thinks he should be given guard passing points, even though he was in a guillotine choke when he was, you know. And this is me penalizing him for talking to me. So this is now the second penalty for Mr. Butt. And uh, that means first it's penalty, then it's penalty advantage. So now, 
I give an advantage to Mr. DeFries because it's Mr. Butt's second penalty. And first it's penalty, and then it's penalty advantage. And we continue with the match. So now at this point, Mr. Butt is up because he has two points. You know, even though Mr. DeFries has quite a few advantages and Mr. Butt has two penalties, he still has two points. And two points beats the advantages even with the two penalties, you know, on the board, right? The first thing you do is you look at the points. If the points are equal, you look at the advantages. If the advantages are equal, you look at the penalties. Now, at this point, uh, Mr. Butt is trying to pass the guard of Mr. DeFries, but Mr. DeFries gets up. And at no point does Mr. Butt secure the hooks for three seconds to get the back point. So he falls off. See, he doesn't secure the hooks for three seconds. So now I'm giving Mr. Butt an advantage for almost taking the back. So Mr. Butt is winning. He has two for the takedown. He has an advantage now. He has a couple penalty points, but Mr. DeFries has, I don't know, five advantages now, I think. I can't see the scoreboard. But watch this. Watch what happens now. Mr. DeFries is passing the guard, and he's going to escape his foot. See? See there? See how his foot's free? So he's going to get two advantages now. One for almost passing the guard, and one for almost mounting, because Mr. Butt escapes. Watch. See? Mr. Butt escapes. And there's an advantage for almost passing. And there's an advantage for almost mounting. He doesn't get an advantage for almost taking the back because he didn't really have the hooks in. So I could have given him one there, though, probably. Now we're standing again. And we go completely off the mat. Now, stop. Right, we've gone completely off the mat. I tell them to go back on the mat. Thankfully, they're following in my instructions at this point. I say go. Here we go again. So now Mr. Butt is still winning. He has two points. Even though Mr. DeFries has a bunch of advantages, Mr. Butt has two points. We go off the mat. Mr. DeFries just walked, sorry, Mr. Butt just walked backwards off the mat. I say go. Mr. DeFries is pursuing him, and Mr. Butt walks to the, he's in the safety area now. I just say stop with the back in the middle again, because, you know, it's supposed to be on the mat. So perhaps Mr. DeFries knows that Mr. Butt is up on points, which he is, and perhaps he's trying to secure a takedown to get, you know, even the board. But Mr. Butt walks off the mat. Mr. Butt walks off the mat again. And at this point, I just grow weary of this, because I've warned him. I've warned him again and again to stay on the mat and to follow referee instructions, and he was talking to me, you know. So now this is his third penalty. His third penalty is a penalty and two points for the other guy. First it's penalty, then it's penalty advantage for the opponent, then it's penalty two. Penalty, and now it's his third penalty, and now I give two points to Mr. DeFries. So now... Mr. DeFries is winning because he has two points, just like the two points Mr. Butt got for his takedown. But now he also has a whole bunch of advantages, like five or six of them. I don't know. I can't see the scoreboard. So now Mr. DeFries is winning. He's gotten two points because of the third penalty. And by the way, if I penalize Mr. Butt again, it's going to be a disqualification because the fourth is goodbye. The scoreboard is counting down, or the, yes, see, the match is over. And now, Mr. Butt is complaining to his corner man about the score, which is technically also illegal. You can penalize someone for uh, complaining to the crowd or coaches or whatever about disagreeing with the score, because it's a sportsmanship thing or something. You know, I think Keenan Cornelius got in trouble for that a few years ago, anyway. I'm not penalizing him for that, though, because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm just trying to you know, apply the rules. And so, Mr. DeFries wins, right? Because 
he got, uh, well, whatever. He wins. Watch the video again if you don't, you know. And he tries to shake his hand and Mr. Butt just walks away. Now this is the second match, okay? After that first match, I said to the guys, listen, and it's not the referee's job to explain the rules to the competitors, okay? Just like it's not the job of the police to explain the law to you. It's not the job of the referee to explain to you the rules. You should know them before you step on the mat, okay? But I've taken the time to explain to both these guys, hey, keep it on the mat, right? And to get points, you have to keep it on the mat. You have to keep it for three seconds. You can't be in a submission hold. Don't talk to the referee. Wear form-fitting clothes. Don't wear a, you know, a burqa or a wedding dress, you know? Because I don't want, you know, I don't want this second match to go off the rails like that first one did. Not, not that it went off the rails, but you know what I mean? I don't want to penalize people, you know? So here we go. And this match, you know, spoiler alert, is a little bit boring, but so be it, you know? So both in this match, both gentlemen, they keep the match on the mat, you know? They're not pushing one another off the mat. They're not walking off the mat. They're, uh, you know... They're staying on the mat looking for takedowns. You know, they're pummeling. I mean, they're not looking for, you know, what am I saying? They're not stalling. I'm not going to penalize them for a lack of combativity. You can see both of them are trying to do something. You know what I mean? They're looking for opportunities to take one another down. And I'm watching, which is what referees do. Right? Right? Bear in mind, if you have any thoughts about these matches or whatever, just put it in the comments below. I'm pretty good about answering comments, you know? But, um, but bear in mind, before you put a comment down there in the comments below, if you think I'm whatever, it's screwing up, read the rules of the IBJJF. You know what I mean? I've done that a bunch of times. I've taken the course a bunch of times. I just did the test. I got 100%. So I kind of know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And one of the things that kind of boils my badger, so to speak, one of the things that annoys me is people that think a referee is doing a bad job when they themselves don't know the rules. How can you know if a referee is doing a bad job if you yourself don't know the rules that they're supposed to know? And I know them, you know, not to, you know, not to toot my own horn or whatever, but, you know, I've been refereeing since 2007, you know, which is 17 years, you know, something like that. Anyway, Mr. Butt has shot in. He's trying to secure a takedown, but Mr. DeFreeze, his back isn't on the mat. His butt isn't on the mat. There's still, you see, he's countering, and they go off the mat, right? So I stop the match. Now, should that be two, or should that be an advantage? Did he keep it for three seconds on the mat, free of a submission? No. He gets an advantage, right? He almost got a takedown. It went off the mat. And it wasn't because Mr. DeFreeze was like, fleeing the combat zone. He was countering the takedown. They just happened to go off the mat. It's different if they're actively fleeing, you know, if they just turn and run off the mat to avoid points being scored. That's that's going to be a penalty in two points. For If he's avoiding a sweep or a takedown by turning and fleeing the mat. You see that happen in, in sometimes in high-level jiu-jitsu tournaments, you know? You see people who have a you know, an understanding of the rules and they know the risk to benefit ratio. And they're like, hey, if I stay on the mat, it's going to be two for the guy. So I'm going to flee the mat and then maybe it's two for him or maybe the referee just lets it slide. You know what I mean? But um, I'm telling you, one of the things I've learned over the years as a referee, you know, and I've done hundreds of tournaments under IBJJF rules, is that letting things slide is a mistake. Because once you start, you know, being uh, the friendly referee, ah, I'm not going to, you know, doesn't work out, you know. I remember I had a match years ago. Oh, there's my computer. I had a match years ago where a guy was in a triangle choke, and he, and he put his arm around, and he put his pinky in the guy's eye. And I was like, I'm sure he's not doing that on purpose. I'm not going to penalize him. And then the guy ended up winning the, 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 you know. And I realized later he was doing that on purpose. That was his counter to the triangle choke. And then he fought later in a different match and I had to DQ him for something else. I forget what it was. My point is, though, man, that uh, the rules exist for a reason. And as the referee, it is your job to apply the rules. And if you don't, you're giving the person breaking the rules an unfair advantage, whether they know the rules and are breaking them on purpose or whether they don't know the rules and are just doing whatever. You see what I mean? To keep the match fair, you must apply the rules. You know, 
And you shouldn't feel like a hoser, that's the Canadian term, for applying the rules. You know? You can see they're going back and forth here, by the way. They're not stalling. They're not, there's nothing here that's, you know, going to result in a penalty. If you see something here that I'm missing, you know, in terms of penalty or points or whatever, put it in the comments below. But bear in mind, I know what I'm doing. And I'm not going to debate that with anybody. You know what I mean? Like I said, I did the IBJJF referee course just recently and I got 100%. And also, I, they, they gave you like, I think it's, they give you 20 minutes or maybe it was an hour to do the test. And I did it in like, you know, like 12 minutes. Just click, 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 click. Boom. Whatever. Because I do these tournaments like one or two a month. And I've been doing that for forever and a day. Anyway. These guys, these guys are grappling with one another. As you can see, they're not stalling. There's no lack of combativity. Nobody's poking each other in the eye. They're not grabbing one another's clothes. Uh, they're not swearing. They're not spitting at each other. I mean, they go off the mat there, but it's not because anybody's... They're, they're genuinely trying. See? And the guy's saying to me, Mr. Butt's saying, hey, it is what it is. And I'm like, I know. Just, just you're doing fine. Just keep going. I'm not going to penalize you for that. See? I'm not trying to be a, you know, a dork or whatever. You know? As an experienced referee, you have to realize when is somebody manipulating the circumstances and when is it that's just it is what it is. You know what I mean? Anyway, they're grappling one another here and uh, Mr. Butt is up by an advantage because of that one time they went off the mat there. He shot in and Mr. DeFreeze slid off the mat. And since then, they've been see, like, okay, I'm going to pause it now. And the rest of the match, my, the battery runs out of my camera, like I say here. The rest of the match was standing, and Mr. Butt, uh, he won that match by that one advantage that I, uh, that I awarded. And here's a secondary thing. After I raised Mr. Butt's arm, you know, hey, you win, he then began to vomit. And he vomited a little bit on the mat, he ran off the mat, he vomited on the floor. And that is also something, as a referee, you have to be aware of. If someone vomits before, if someone vomits before you raise their arm... They must get disqualified. If they vomit, if they pee their pants, if they poo on the mat, then they get disqualified. But when you raise their arm, they have won. That match, you have signaled who has won, right? So Mr. Butt, when he vomited, he did it after I raised his arm. And then he, you know, vomited on the mat and vomited on the, on the gymnasium floor and then just kind of disappeared, you know? And I was like, where did he go? He probably went to the, I don't know, the bathroom. I don't know, I don't know, but whatever. Here we go. So now let's look at match number three, okay? There's a third match because they've each won one match, okay? Mr. DeFreeze won the first match by points, I guess. And Mr. Uh, Butt won the second match by an advantage for that one takedown that he tried there. And now it's match number three, okay? Right, because it's the best two out of three. They each have one match. So by my math, they each have to win another one to have the best two out of three. You know what I mean? Arithmetic. So anyway... They're, uh, once again, locking up with one another, and um, they're looking for the takedown or whatever, you know, looking to score some points or what have you. And uh, again, Mr. DeFreeze is the one wearing the yellow anklet. I'm wearing a yellow bracelet. And uh, Mr. Butts, the fellow there in the blue shorts, and uh, he's wearing, you know, thankfully this time out, he's wearing a uh, grappling rash guard. He's not wearing a sweater or a parachute or something that might interfere with, you know, grappling, you know. And uh, here, let's see what happens here. Mr. DeFreeze, he's wrestled with Mr. Butt now for like, I don't know, 12 minutes, I guess, or something like that. So he's pretty wise to what this fellow, uh, what this fellow's game is, which he's more of a wrestler, you know? And, um, and you'll see what happens here, all right? I won't do a spoiler, but, you know, you can probably guess what's about to happen. You know, when you know someone is uh, a wrestler... Right? When they've invested their time into takedowns, how do you rob them of their uh, skill development? You know what I mean? And again, your Mr. Butt's shooting in. Mr. DeFreeze is countering. That's not worth anything. His butt, his back didn't touch the mat. You know? But like I'm saying, if you realize you're fighting an opponent who has good takedowns, and you're like, you know what? Let's take the whole takedowns thing off the board. Let's rob them of their ability to score points via takedowns. What do you do? That's the theme to Jeopardy, by the way. And you can see that Mr. Mr. Butt here is not going to be getting any advantages here, because at no point is he getting Mr. DeFreeze's butt or back on the mat with him on top. So that doesn't get two points. That doesn't get an advantage. And watch what he does here. Mr. DeFreeze, I mean. Or maybe it's not right here, but watch what he does, you know, in a moment here.
And bear in mind, at this point, in this third match, it's tied at 0-0. No one has any advantages, you know. No one has any penalties or points or whatever, you know. And if it were go to all the way through with nothing like that, it's a referee's decision, you know, and you pick the more, I don't know, aggressive person, the person who's implementing their game plan more effectively, you know. But luckily, that doesn't it doesn't go that way with this one. But watch the way it does go. You'll see what I mean. So they're trying to take each other down, they're sizing each other up, they're hand fighting or whatever the term is, looking for opportunities to shoot in for takedowns or get the body lock, you know. And Mr. Butt, I think, is more of a wrestler, more of a mixed martial arts fighter. Mr. DeFreeze seems like he's more of a, you know, jujitsu guy, you know, with more of a, maybe a well-rounded game. I don't know, maybe not well-rounded, but he's, you know, he's, he's invested in both a top game, a bottom game, all that stuff, you know. I don't think we've seen Mr. Butt utilize the bottom game whatsoever, like his guard or half guard, anything like that, right? It's been Mr. Butt shooting in, Mr. DeFreeze countering, putting him in submissions, guillotines, that kind of stuff in the previous match, right? That's generally what's going on. So like I said, what do you do when you know you're fighting a wrestler who's probably going to get points for taking you down if you stay standing with them? You pull guard, right? So now, Mr. DeFreeze has pulled guard. Mr. Butt was not trying to take him down at the moment. If someone pulls guard like halfway into a takedown, okay, you're just conceding the takedown. But that was a clean pull. Mr. Butt wasn't trying any kind of takedown at the time. And now Mr. DeFreeze is beginning to look for a triangle choke. And Mr. Butt is like, no, sir, you're not gonna, you're not gonna triangle choke me. Not today, sir, you know? Now, at this point, I'd like to point out, okay, when you're in someone's guard in a jiu-jitsu match, it's not mixed martial arts. You're expected, the onus is upon the top person to try to pass the guard. I mean, there's also an onus on the bottom person to try and do something with it, but you can get called for stalling, you know, both the top and bottom person. So let's watch this. And Mr. And Mr. DeFries on the bottom is looking for a triangle choke. He's clearly not stalling, but watch this. Okay, now. In jiu-jitsu, in IBJJF rules, you get called for stalling if after 20, if there's 20 seconds of inactivity, okay? So let's watch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. See? That's like, that's stalling. At this point, I should have penalized Mr. Butt for, you know, after the initial few seconds, I should have been like, or whatever, after the first 20 seconds, I should have been like looched. And, and penalize him. Luch is Portuguese for fight, right? And I should have penalized him. But, you know, I haven't penalized him yet. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Because I'm sick of penalizing people. But whatever, here we go. And Mr. DeFreeze on the bottom is looking for a triangle. Now, when someone's in your guard and they're doing nothing, you should not go for stuff on them. Because now you're robbing them of the likelihood that they're going to get penalized. You know what I mean? Because now he's not stalling. Now he's defending, you know? And you can't penalize somebody for defending a submission, right? But had Mr. DeFries just stayed in his back with a closed guard and the other fellow doing nothing, and maybe he's looking for a little bit of a Kimura or a little bit of a guillotine, I don't know, he would have been he would have been penalized at that point. And now watch this. He's trying a triangle. Mr. Butt is countering the triangle or at least defending the triangle, you know? And uh, Mr. DeFries eventually just goes back to his guard. And watch what Mr. Butt does. He just shells up again, like so. Right? And at this point, I'm like, you know what? This is silly. And look, he's not doing anything. He's not trying to pass the guard. He's just... And in mixed martial arts, this is fine. But it's not mixed martial arts. It's, you know, it's jiu-jitsu. You're supposed to actually advance your position, you know? And at this point, it would be him passing the guard. So I give him a verbal warning now. I say, hey, you gotta pass the guard. 
And I say to him, you're going to be penalized now because you're stalling. And Mr. Butt now begins arguing with me saying, hey, what do you mean? I am trying to pass the guard. And that, that in itself should be another additional penalty. See, he's like, yeah, see how he's, he's giving me some sass here? So I'm going to verbally penalize him. I'm penalizing him here for, that's a lack of combativity. Now, I should be giving him another one for talking to the referee. And look at him now. He's now he's doing this to his corner man. That should be a third penalty for um, signaling to the audience or to your coach that you disagree with the referee's call, which again is a penalty. But I think I just give him the one. And he's still talking to me. He's still talking to me. At that point, that should be a DQ, right? If you're, you know. Passivity, talking to the ref, unsportsmanlike conduct, I guess, you know? And I see, look, I have to tell him to get, and even me and Mr. DeFries are saying, let's go. Right? In IBJJF, in a big tournament, you would get disqualified for that. And again, now he's trying to pass, but he doesn't. Again, what's happening there, that's not almost a pass. At no point did he have almost side control. At no point did he have a neon belly or mount or north-south, right? Mr. DeFries is flipping and standing up. That's not almost a guard pass. He's trying a takedown, and Mr. DeFries is sprawling. That's not almost a takedown, right? To get advantages for takedowns, you have to get the guy's butt or back on the mat for a moment. To get an advantage for a guard pass, you have to have for a second... Side control, mount, neon belly, or north-south. But Mr. Butt's not getting any of that, right? So he's not getting an advantage, right? And I'm saying, go! You know? At least at this point, he's kind of following my instructions, not like in that first match, right? He's shooting in. Mr. DeFries is going behind him. He has one hook in. See, his coach is yelling both hooks. But he's only getting one hook in. And I don't know if you can see at this point, he's got a very deep rear naked on Mr. Butt at that point. You couldn't see it, but he had it really, he had a rear naked totally sunk in. So he's going to get an advantage for that. And now look, Mr. Butt now argues with me again. And he's motioning, see? And Mr. DeFreeze is taking his shirt off, which is also, you know, against the rules. But, you know, I'll penalize him for that in a second. See? Mr. Butt continues to argue with me. He continues to motion to his corner man that he disagrees with my call. And I'm, at this point, I'm giving Mr. Uh, DeFreeze, I'm giving him an advantage for that rear naked choke he had. And his corner man is telling me you got to penalize him for taking his shirt off. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So I give him a penalty for taking, here, penalty. I penal and I'm penalizing Mr. DeFreeze for taking his shirt off. But at the end of the day, he wins. You know, because he got that advantage for uh, the rear naked choke, and I had given Mr. Butt one penalty for talking to me. Even though I should have given him three or possibly four, and possibly a DQ, because he was talking to me, he was, uh, oh yeah, he was stalling, talking to me, and signaling to his corner that he disagrees with my decisions. So, and now look, he's continuing to argue with me. And after that, he argued with me even more and kind of, you know, I forget what he said, but it was kind of disrespectful. So this is why I wanted to go over those matches with you and uh, explain why I made the calls that I made. And uh, I encourage you, before you step on the mat, read the rules. Know the rules. And if you have any questions, if you see me at a tournament, come up and ask me, hey, what about this? What about that? I'm a friendly guy. I'm happy to chat. Um, and on that note, I'll see you at the next tournament.